that brings us to what happened with the University of Alabama. So Alabama, there was a piece put out by CNN, and you can see here the headline from CNN. There we go. Okay. The University of Alabama reports over 500 COVID-19 cases less than a week after classes start. Now, here's the thing. That headline is factually true. There's nothing incorrect about it. And I read the article, and I didn't see any inaccuracies, per se, in the article itself. It mostly talked about the numbers, which have gone up. The problem is that just seeing that headline alone rips everything out of context. And part of that is CNN's fault, probably, because they really, really like this narrative. They love this narrative of a university in the heart of Trump country where people are literally having COVID parties, which is also kind of funny because in this pandemic, every party is a COVID party. <laughs> Let's just be real about that. Every single party that you have is a COVID party because you have no idea whether or not the people around you have it. So if you're having a party, it's a COVID party, whether you call it that or that's the intended purpose or not. But nonetheless, backtracking a little bit, it's clear that in this environment, CNN, and they've, they've shown this before, they've shown it with the ridiculous hit piece that they did with Orange Beach at the Gulf when they were having their reporter walk around with a mask on on a sunny day at the beach and then immediately take it off when he was off camera, which a whole bunch of spectators made note of or, or trying to make the case that, oh, these crazy Alabamians down in Trump country, the, the reddest state in the union, they're just, they're all going to get themselves killed because they're not socially distancing correctly or wearing a mask and all this insanity that they tried to push. CNN loves this narrative that, uh, see, because of their, because, you know, CNN is the ultimate Karen. Uh, see, because they're not wearing their mask and they're not socially distancing and they're getting these COVID parties, uh, their, their rates have skyrocketed at the University of Alabama. There was a statement in this same CNN article by Stuart Bell, who is the president of the University of Alabama. It says, Bell urged social distancing, mask wearing, and limited gatherings. He said violators would be subject to possible suspension from school. So you can be suspended from school for not social distancing or not mask wearing. That's insane. And then he follows up with, quote, completing the fall semester is our goal, Bell said Sunday in an email to students. The margin of error is shrinking. Okay, that is the worst possible strategy that you could do. There, there's literally not a policy worse than that. For a university to bring all the students together to get a whole bunch of them infected, and because a whole bunch of them get infected, they decide oh, we're just going to shut down and send everybody out. That disperses the virus. They are much, much safer if you do see an exponential growth in the number of people that get the virus to keep them there and quarantine them there. You don't send them out into the state. That just means the virus is going to spread more. You're the president of a school. You should know this. <laughs> but anyway, President Bell... Uh, I mean, granted, it's not as bad as taking people that you know are COVID-19 positive and sending them into nursing homes like Governor Cuomo. Granted, it's not quite that level of depravity. But still, seriously, President Bell, th this is your strategy. Uh, it's just... I, I, can't, I can't even work with that level of ridiculousness. Uh, that's so incredibly stupid. So, are these students actually at risk? Because that's ultimately what matters here. Because everybody's freaking out about the increase in cases. Are they actually at risk? So, here's the thing. I ran some of the numbers, as I am wont to do. You guys know me. This is just who I am. I, I love running the numbers. I'm going to show you more graphs. I know that you can't wait to see more statistics. So, here's the numbers and how they actually look. These are stats for people within the state of Alabama from the ages of 18 to 24. So pretty much the entirety of your college student demographic. The cases that we have for people in this age group currently are 15,445, which accounts for 13.92% of all cases in the state of Alabama. The deaths are four. Four deaths. 0.2% of all the deaths. 
And frankly, I had to round up to get that one. And by the way, that would mean that based on the number of people that have it versus the number of deaths, that the fatality rate for people in this age demographic for the coronavirus, this is the fatality rate for people that have the virus. Not overall, just the people that get the virus. Once you have the virus, this is your odds of dying from it. 0.026. That is 1 in 3,861. So, what some would call really, really good odds. Your odds of dying from the virus are incredibly tiny if you are in this particular age demographic. The total population in the state of Alabama for people ages 18 to 24, now I had to estimate a little bit on this one, but this is uh, the, the best number that I could find based on the available statistics, 216,702 in this age demographic. So that would mean your current odds of dying from COVID-19, because remember the last stat we looked at was just your odds of dying if you got the virus, but your odds overall of dying from COVID-19 is 0.0018%. That is 1 in 54,196. So if you're in this age demographic, you can understand why you're not worried about dying from the virus. The total University of Alabama students, this is their student population, 38,563. The total students without antibodies, 33,195. Now, how did I get this stat? So what I did was I took the rate that the state of Alabama has, that figure that you saw earlier, which is 13.92. I took that and then, because we can assume that the student population of the University of Alabama students are roughly the same as the general population. So I took that 13% of the students off because it's safe to assume that about 13% of those students, 13.92% of those students already got the virus and therefore are immune to it at least for the time being. So that being said, that reduced the number of eligible students by a significant amount, which means mathematically the absolute worst case scenario is that we lose nine students. And of course, if that did happen, and that's, that's assuming that literally every single student that is eligible that might potentially get the virus because they are, haven't already had it, that means that every single student would have to get infected with the virus with the current fatality rate to get nine students. Keep in mind, they're freaking out about 500 students getting it. We would have to have 10 times that amount. Well, almost 10 times somewhere between eight and 10, about eight to 10 times that number of students to get the virus to get even one single death. And so our worst case scenario is that nine students would die. And that of course would be tragic if it winds up happening. It would be tragic to lose any student. But the question is not, would we lose any students by having classes this fall because of coronavirus? It's, is the risk worth it? And this sounds cold and cruel, I know, but the truth is we make this decision literally every single day of our life. Stepping outside the front door in the morning is a risk. Heck, staying at home is a risk. You can die at home. Most accidents or, or fatalities do happen at home. That's where most people die, because where most people spend their time. All of life is a calculated risk. And so the question is not... Would any students potentially die from this? Because there is a possibility that that could potentially happen. The question is, how much of a risk is it? And how do we measure that against other risks that we're already accustomed to? Well, if we're looking at, again, stats for people ages 18 to 24, the 18 to 24 COVID deaths per 100,000 is 25.89 pretty small when you're looking at a population of 100,000. The 18 to 24 automobile fatalities per 100,000 is 29.21, which would mean, if you're looking at the numbers, you are 12.8% more likely to die in the car on the way to the university than you are to get coronavirus and die as a result of going 
to the University of Alabama. So if you're looking at a risk versus reward thing, if you are willing to get into a car and you're 18 to 24 years old, you should be willing to risk getting coronavirus. You shouldn't be holed up and quarantined in a room. All of life is a calculated risk, and this illustrates how we accept risk every single day that are actually more deadly than an 18 to 24 year old's odds of dying from the coronavirus. The potential carrier students, if you adjust for the CDC, is 27,000, not the 33,000 we were looking at beforehand, 27,827. Now, why do I say it this way? Because literally every single stat that we've looked at beforehand ignores the adjustment for the CDC, which suggests that 10 times as many people actually have the virus than we think actually have it. So if you measure that out, and if you look at it and, and you know, basically do the math and adjust everything to assume that there are 10 times as many people that have the virus versus people that have died from it, these are the stats that you get. So if we assume that that is correct, then that means even more students that are attending the University of Alabama have it and are therefore immune. Therefore, the number of eligible students that might potentially become infected with it necessarily drops. And that number is 27,827. So we're already dealing with a lower risk just by adjusting it for how many students may potentially get the virus. Then you look at the fatality rate, again, if you adjust it for the CDC, would actually be 0.026. That's how unlikely you are to die from this virus. And remember, this is if you already have the virus, not the general population. That means if you get the virus, your odds of actually dying from it are 1 in 38,613. It's extremely low. And that also means that our worst case scenario, if you adjust it again, because you remember originally our worst case scenario was nine students die. And that was based on how many students could potentially get it. And also what the likelihood that they were going to pass if they did get it. So if you look at the actual worst case scenario, adjusting for the sampling rate that the CDC has advised people on, that means you actually get 0.72 deaths. In other words, we don't even get to a whole death. There's a very realistic chance that even if we had no social distancing whatsoever, that everybody just threw caution to the wind, everybody did classes exactly the way that they normally did, that the worst case scenario in that one is that and every single person that is eligible to get the virus gets it, there's still a very good chance that not a single student dies. And by the way, we actually saw that play out at the beginning of the pandemic with Liberty University, which never shut down classes and did have several students that got the virus. Not all of them, obviously, because that's unrealistic and ridiculous. We're only using that for theoretical purposes to show the absolute worst case scenario. But if you're looking at that particular statistic and you're looking at how Liberty University handled it, well, they didn't lose a single life. And there's a good reason to believe that we could potentially have an entire school year normal with no social distancing, no safety measures whatsoever. I mean, they could literally have everybody come in and lick the same popsicle stick and make sure every single student got the virus, try to intentionally infect them, and there's still a good chance they don't lose a single student because of it. That's how undeadly this thing is for somebody in this age demographic. So the fact that CNN is worried about it and aghast at the fact that there's been such a rapid increase in college students in Tuscaloosa is just dumb. It is completely devoid of any kind of logic or reason. And just to be clear, I'm not saying be reckless. I'm not saying throw caution to the wind. I think you should take safety measures because, yes, the chances are low but that doesn't mean that you need to help it along. If there's something you can do that's easy and simple and within the realm of reason to sort of mitigate that risk, then yeah, why not? I mean, your odds of dying in a car accident are pretty darn low too. Doesn't mean you shouldn't wear a seatbelt. That's the behavior of a reasonable person. 
But what I am saying is this idea that we need to live in fear and the slightest chance of anything going wrong, the slightest chance of cases going up, that we need to cancel football season and cancel uni- cancel university and send everybody back home. First of all, that's dumb just because, again, that would just spread the virus. But second of all, that's the wrong mindset to have. You are grossly overreacting to the level of risk that this thing actually poses to college students. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.